Okay, ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Hi, everyone. My name is Asaf Luxembourg. This, or this, or this is Zoe Cohen, who is here to share with us how she hacked her Aliyah story. And we're doing this on Zoom, of course, because of COVID-19. Um, so here we also have a COVID video. Um, Zoe, we met in February, I think, on the Our Crowd Summit in Jerusalem, if I remember correctly. Yes, we did. And then we met again a, um, a couple of months later when the world flipped upside down and we met at ITC, Israel Tech Challenge. Yes, that is true. <laughs> well, that seems like, I don't know, 40,000 years ago. So... That's true. Why don't you just, uh, you know, present yourself, say a few words about yourself or whoever's watching this to get to know you. Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Zoe Cohen, and I'm from South Africa. I currently live in Tel Aviv. I made Aliyah around two months ago or so, and I'm working at Duality Interactive. I'm a software developer. Zoe, what was your initial motivation to come to Israel? It's quite a hard one for me because... I came on a Masai program, which was six months long. However, there, was, there wasn't really a lot of thinking behind it. Basically, I had finished my degree in finance. And the beginning of 2018 was a bit of a turmoil. I lost someone very close to me. And generally, when you lose someone, it's quite a sad thing. But that's when you realize how short life is and maybe how much time you've actually wasted. I didn't really enjoy finance. And so I figured that now that I've graduated, I can go to Israel, I can do a Masai program in which I would be able to intern, which was a huge plus for me considering I was trying to find myself. And when I found out that I'd actually be living with five other people, that really appealed to me even more. I thought that it would be a very good way in order to grow as a person, in order to just kind of let loose, grow, trying to sort out who I am, what career I wanted to be into. Right. Look, the next time you're going to live with five other people, you'll be the mother. So, you know. Um, <laughs> so how was that experience? So you came to Israel, you started this um, Masa program with an internship, never mind the details when and where. But overall, yeah. how was that experience for you? It was absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm still here now, so it couldn't have been that shocking. Lived with six people in total. That was incredible. I interned and my internship I actually didn't really enjoy, hence why I'm now a developer. All in all, the, I, could, I couldn't recommend more so to be able to do that type of program. I think that you're able to learn a lot about yourself as well as the world around you. And so I think that's where I can answer your question at. So the program came to an end, you decided you want to stay and then what? Well, I decided that I wanted to stay, but I couldn't exactly do nothing. So there were two options. Either I carry on studying, which I really didn't want to do. Student or visa. I, yeah, student visa. Or make Aliyah and really find something to do. So I decided to make Aliyah. I found Israel Tech Challenge online. And I figured that I'm moving to the startup nation. I don't want finance. And so maybe I should try coding. The only thing I there's nothing to... wrong with finance for those of you who love finance, right? Absolutely, absolutely in nothing wrong. For me, yeah. in my story, in my case, I'd learned so much about it and I just realized that wasn't really the industry for me. I didn't know if programming and development would be the industry, but I just kind of took the wild card and saw, like, said that I would see where it goes. Found RTC online and... You did the uh, full stack that. program, right? I did the full stack development program. I finished last year, April, and it went brilliantly. Okay. If you look at your journey from the time you decided you want to stay in Israel, or sorry, from the time you landed in Israel, first day of Masa, until today in the morning, what was the hardest part, hardest moment, if you recall that? Wow. I mean, as an Ola, there are a lot of hard moments. You get really homesick. My entire family is in South Africa. Then there was job search. That was pretty crazy. And then there was working in the actual business world, in Israel, in another language, having only studied coding for around six months. That was crazy. Which is also the language a language. Barrier. Exactly. So the language barrier in both 
technologies and actual language, English versus Hebrew, was, that was, I think, the biggest challenge, hands down. In those hardest, darkest, loneliest, loneliest moments, what helped you the most? What kept you going? Well, I mean, the amazing thing about Israel is that you can always find your community and a great group of friends, yeah. So that kind well, of answers that So first. for anyone who's out there and seeing this and they feel like this exactly right now, what should they do? Wow. It's, I mean, as an Ola, finding it difficult in Israel, the only way to kind of get through that is by kind of finding your community, by working out the kind of people that you want to be around and also embracing it. Israelis could, you might, be a, you might find that Israel is a very difficult country or that the people are difficult to surround yourself with. And you might find that you have no friends here, but everyone here is willing to help you. And there's a huge, huge, huge community of Olem and they'll all take you in with open arms. Okay. So in a recent blog post, which was posted on um, ITC, on Israel Tech Challenge, um, which is right over here, we're seeing this right now, you basically shared a very interesting story about what happened during COVID-19, right? Yes. Would you mind big... maybe just <laughs> recapping that story in one or two yes. sentences so that people will go and read it more? <laughs> yeah. Lesson. So go and read the blog post in order for all the details. But basically, COVID-19 started, my company got involved in a project that is corona-centered. And after starting working on the project, there came a point where it was kind of me alone. And I came, a, I came across a Facebook post that kind of made me realize that I could steer this project into South Africa. But it also would involve me kind of refactoring and changing the product a, whole, a, a, a lot. So anyway, I lost a sense of work-life work balance. I worked really hard, ended up releasing the product into South Africa. It was quite successful. I ended up becoming a lead developer of a team of one. <laughs> Still a lead developer nonetheless, you know. I couldn't really lead Man anyone else. It was with me. Yeah. And so that's been just a work in progress. It's amazing. So hold I can on. Say that. Let, me, let me see if we understand correctly. There was a product related to Corona, which was due to yes. be released in the U.S. initially, right? Yes, it was due to be released in the U.S. And, and then things are happening, and you're from South Africa, and exactly. it has nothing to do with the fact that you're from South Africa. I mean, you're a junior developer, but then you understand that one plus one equals three, which is the basic exactly. business and entrepreneurship. Exactly. exactly. I saw a little gap that South Africa needed this product, went to my boss and said, would you support me? And he said, amazingly, yes, go for it. Unsurprisingly. Um, and, and then you led, if I remember correctly, you led a lot of things that are related to that launch in South Africa, but were not directly related to your actual job description. Um, from marketing, uh, to the business plan, mm -hmm. opening a bank account, you know, you basically became a product <laughs> manager in a way. Yeah, I kind of became uh, like the boss of myself regarding this little project. Anything that I needed, I kind of had to handle myself, which was insane. I did do the marketing. I did. I was support. I was fully customer support, which was really cool. Um, the finances of it, I was always doing business development. Exactly. I kind of covered everything across the spectrum. And I was actually able to use a whole bunch of things that I studied when I was in finance, which was pretty cool. Love this. So again, all the details are, you know, if you want the full story. Yeah, they're all in the blog post. <laughs> but what is your main lesson from this episode, which is still ongoing, which you would love to share with others who may struggle or in a similar situation or face a similar opportunity? Yeah, I think that I was faced with an opportunity that I kind of decided to grab. And from that, I think that I mean, I'm not really in a position where I can sit and give everyone advice, but I can share with you what I learned from this situation, was that to not be scared, especially in Israel, the worst someone can say to you is no. And the only time they can say that is once you ask a question. And therefore, ask the question. If they say no, they say no. If they say yes, well, then you've got to work. <laughs> um, 
I think that th from this, I also learned how to be agile, especially in COVID-19. I think that people are faced with turmoil. The whole world is, I mean, it's gone crazy. People are at home working. It's, it's been insane that you have to just be able to adapt and you have to use the opportunities that are out there in order to make life work for you. I think that something I did struggle with was imposter syndrome. I constantly, and to this day, I always feel like an absolute imposter. I feel like I am here, I don't belong here, and I'm lying to everyone. And I think that that is something that you can really use to your advantage. It's generally noise in your head. If you turn it into a voice of kind of reasoning, maybe I could call it that, then you can use that as like a motivational fire to keep you going, to keep improving. You'll never be perfect. The imposter syndrome will always be there, but at least then you've got something to keep you going as opposed to imposter syndrome telling you to stop. I love this. Zoe, I don't think we can end this in any better way. Thank you so much for sharing your story, um, for being with us, and thank you everybody for watching and reading the blog post. Thank you.